guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we will be talking about celiac disease. So let's get started. So what is celiac disease? Celiac disease is an immune-mediated enteropathy triggered by the ingestion of gluten-containing grains, which include wheat, rye, and barley in genetically susceptible persons. The disease also has several autoimmune features including the production of highly disease-specific IgA and IgG autoantibodies to tissue transglutaminase or TTG. Simply put, when these patients ingest any form of gluten-containing products, they have an adverse bodily reaction. So basically, from this definition of celiac disease, we know that it's an immune-mediated enteropathy. Enteropathy means a pathology in the small intestines. And second of all, we know that the disease is preceded by the person or the patient's ingestion of gluten-containing products. And when these patients ingest gluten-containing products, such as wheat, rye, and barley, they have an immune feature of their disease. So when they ingest these gluten-containing products, their immune system fires out these IgG and IgA antibodies, and they actually target the small intestine. So normally when we ingest these products, nothing actually happens. It just undergoes the normal digestion process. But because these wheat, rye and barley products contains transglutamase, the body in patients with celiac disease produces these autoantibodies against this transglutamase enzyme, which is found in these products. And by doing this, they target the food as it's passing along the small intestine during its digestion process. And because the small intestine is targeted, this causes injury to the small intestine. So the normal anatomical surface of the small intestine is made out of billions and billions of these small villi. And these villi help in the absorption process of all the nutrients we ingest. And in celiac disease, you can see there's intense damage to these villi. And this is what ends up happening. So these patients not only suffer from their body having an adverse effect to the gluten products themselves, but because of the injury caused by the antibodies which are produced by these IgG and IgA antibodies that are targeting and destroying these villi, their villi look something like this. And you can see this is what damaged celiac disease villi look like. And because these villi are damaged, and their number one function in the body is to help with the absorption of nutrients, these patients will suffer some sort of a malnutrition. And because their villi are damaged, all substances such as fats, proteins, all of these will not be able to now be digested properly and they're going to suffer from anemias, weight loss, malnutrition, and to a certain degree, a malabsorption disease. Now let's talk about the genetics behind celiac disease. The vast majority of people with celiac disease have one of two types of the HLA-DQ protein, either the HLA-DQ2 or the HLA-DQ8 genes. About 95% of people with celiac disease have the HLA-DQ2 gene and most of the remaining 5% have the HLA-DQ8 gene. These genes activate the T lymphocytes and initiate the autoimmune process. The immune system now mistakes healthy cells and substances for harmful ones and produces antibodies against them. In the case of celiac disease, the immune system mistakes substances that make up gluten as a threat to the body. The antibodies that are produced cause the surface of the small intestine to become inflamed, which means red and swollen. The surface of the intestine is usually covered with millions of tiny tube-shaped growths called villi. Villi increase the surface area of the gut and help to digest food more effectively. However, in celiac disease, the damage and inflammation to the lining of the gut flattens the villi, reducing their ability to help with digestion. As a result, the intestine isn't able to digest the nutrients from the food ingested. So, Something to note in celiac disease is that the majority of the patients have this hereditary gene and they are the HLA-DQ2 or HLA-DQ8 genes and they are found in chromosome 6. And what's very interesting about this gene that's found, when the gluten comes into contact with the intestinal mucosa, 
an autoimmune response follows and the body produces these T cells which then in turn cause damage to the intestine via an inflammatory response. So this is why celiac disease causes harm and destruction to the small intestine. So what are the signs and symptoms of celiac disease? Intestinal problems like diarrhea, gas and constipation, abdominal pain, nausea, anemia, an itchy blistering rash which is called dermatitis herpetiformis, loss of bone density, headaches or general fatigue, bone and joint pain, mouth ulcers, weight loss, heartburn, and fatigue as a result of malnutrition. So the number one function of the intestine in our body is to absorb the nutrients and constantly nourish our body with our basic needs. But in celiac disease, because these villi are destroyed and the intestine becomes destroyed, its function is thereby inhibited. And most of the signs and symptoms are centered around this. And that is the inability of the body to digest and absorb those nutrients. So the intestines are unable to digest simple stuff like vitamin B12, folic acid, iron, and therefore this, the patient will suffer from an anemia. They are unable to digest the food that they intake. So the food has to go somewhere. So there'll be a buildup of gas. There'll be diarrhea or bouts of constipation. And something also very specific to celiac disease is a blistering rash which is called dermatitis herpetiformis and i put a picture on the right you can see this breakout of this rash and that is quite characteristic for a celiac disease they're also going to suffer from bone and joint pain because they won't have enough calcium that's been absorbed as well as weight loss and malnutrition because none of the food is being digested and absorbed into the bloodstream and this will lead to somewhat of a malabsorption syndrome so how is celiac disease diagnosed? A family history of celiac disease, because remember we said that it has a genetic predisposition and we said those genes which are HLA-DQ2 or HLA-DQ8 are passed on from the parents to the children. So if you have a quick look at my bottom left, you'll see the normal parent and the affected parent in celiac disease. And this is a little punnet square which shows the genetic predisposition of the disease and you can see if one parent is affected and we have one normal parent the chances of the children being affected is 50 percent we could also do blood tests for the anti-transglutamase antibodies or the anti-ttg antibodies and we can measure the levels of immunoglobulins a and g Genetic testing for the human leukocyte antigens or HLA-DQ2 or HLA-DQ8 genes can also be done. And as we said, that's on chromosome 6 and it's in the HLA-DQ position, which is here. An upper GI endoscopy with biopsy of the duodenum or the jejunum to obtain samples can also be done. The endoscopic view shows scalloping of the folds and a cracked mud appearance of the mucosa. So this is the typical cracked mud appearance and this is basically due to that damaged villi within the small intestine. Um, it sort of looks like little bubbles and it's compared to cracked mud so it's called a cracked mud appearance. Capsule endoscopy which also allows identification of typical mucosal changes observed in celiac disease can also be done but has a lower sensitivity compared to the regular endoscopy with biopsy and histology. Treatment of the disease. The best treatment for celiac disease is a strict lifelong gluten-free diet. In addition to wheat, foods that contain gluten such as barley, gram flour, malt, rye and semolina should also be avoided. So if these patients follow a gluten-free diet, their prognosis is very good and all these symptoms disappear quite nicely. So what are the complications of celiac disease? Untreated celiac disease can cause malnutrition because the damage to the small intestine means it can't absorb enough nutrients. Malnutrition can lead to anemia and weight loss and in children malnutrition can also cause slow growth and short stature. Loss of calcium and bone density. Malabsorption of calcium and vitamin D 
may also lead to softening of the bone and present with diseases such as osteomalacia and rickets in children and loss of bone density such as osteoporosis in adults. Infertility and miscarriage. Malabsorption of calcium and vitamin D can also contribute to reproductive issues. Lactose intolerance. Damage to the small intestines may cause you to experience abdominal pain and diarrhea after eating lactose-containing dairy products, even though they don't contain gluten. Once your intestine is healed, you may be able to tolerate dairy products again. However, some people continue to experience lactose intolerance despite successful management of celiac disease. Cancer. People with celiac disease who don't maintain a gluten-free diet have a greater risk of developing several forms of cancer, including intestinal lymphoma and small bowel cancer. Neurological problems. Some people with celiac disease may develop neurological problems such as seizures or peripheral neuropathy. So the neurological manifestations would mean numbness and tingling, burning and stabbing sensation and weakness or paralysis in the limbs, tremors or shaking, lightheadedness, fainting, fever, high or low grade, and veins bulging and being painful. And at the top, we see a little Indian girl who presented at age three and a half with chronic diarrhea and severe malnutrition. And investigations showed that she was positive of CD serological markers. And the biopsy showed flattened mucosa in the small intestine. After six months of gluten-free diet, an impressive improvement of the nutritional status of the child was evident. So you can see if they these patients do follow a gluten-free diet, their prognosis is very, very good and they're able to lead happy and healthy lives. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this presentation very informative. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe and share. And if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.